and welcome to Knife Size Science Learning Series. My name is Jenny. And I'm Grace, and we both work at the New York Hall of Science. Recently, I discovered a really strange new substance. I've been testing it, and it doesn't respond like any other material I've worked with before. So I called in Grace to help me investigate this wild and wacky substance. What? Tell me more about it. Is it a solid, a liquid, or a gas? That's the weird thing. It's all three. Hmm. Is it safe to touch or drink? Yeah, it is safe to touch and to drink. And in fact, we need it to live. But at the same time, too much can be dangerous. If it's so valuable, it must be hard to find. Actually, you can find it almost anywhere on Earth. I think I have an idea of what it is. Is it H2O? H2O? More like H2O. Today, we are going to explore the wild and wacky world of water. Like we mentioned, water is amazing. It's the only substance that can be found on Earth naturally and abundantly as a solid, liquid, and gas. It covers 70% of the Earth's surface. And you can see its effects every day. Take a look outside. How does the weather look? Have you ever wondered why it rains or snows? To do the water cycle baggie activity, you will need the following supplies. Three ice cubes, a Ziploc baggie, tape, optional is Sharpie markers, and blue food coloring. Today we're going to make water cycle baggies in order to learn how water goes from one phase to another. Before you add your materials to the baggie, you can even draw an outdoor scene. And if you have blue food coloring, you can add it before you put in the ice cubes. Imagine those ice cubes are a frozen lake. What do you think will happen once we tape that baggie to a sunny window? Make a hypothesis. Before starting any experiment, scientists always make an educated guess or a hypothesis. Pulling on information that you already have, think about what you guess or hypothesize the answer to that question may be. The sun heats up the ice cube and melts it into a liquid. After a while, it will also cause evaporation to happen and turn that liquid into water vapor. It rises to the top of the bag where condensation occurs, where that water vapor turns back into water droplets, which, when enough collect in a cloud, they get too big to stay up and come down, which is called precipitation. Precipitation can be rain, snow, sleet, hail, anything that comes down from the sky. From there, the water cycle starts all over again. So we've talked about water and our weather. Now let's talk about some of the other properties of water that make it stand out so much from other substances. To do this activity along with me, you will need to gather these materials. A bowl or another shallow dish, water, paperclip, pencil, pepper, toothpick, liquid soap, and a paper towel. Pause here if you need time to gather these supplies. Start by pouring some water in the bowl. For me, I added blue coloring to my water so that you can more easily see what's happening, but you can feel free to skip this step. Grab a paper clip. Put that paper clip in the water. What did it do? Man, my paper clip sank. But I wonder if there's a way to put it in the water so that the paper clip stays on top. Feel free to use other materials with the paper clip to experiment. Here's how I ended up doing it. Set the paper clip on a small section of paper towel and then gently place the towel in the water. As the paper towel starts to take on water, it'll drop away from the paper clip. If you want the paper towel to sink fully, you can poke it down with a pencil. What is happening here? Where the liquid water meets the air is called the surface, and the surface of water has some really special properties. Water molecules are actually attracted to each other, meaning they want to stick together, and that sticking together is what forms the surface. We call this cohesion. When you put the paper clip in the water, narrow end first, it'll slice through that barrier and sink to the bottom. However, 
if you can set the paper clip in really gently so that it's distributing its weight evenly over the water surface, those water molecules, because they're attracted to each other and to the paper clip, they will continue to stick together and it'll hold the paper clip up. Water actually has the highest surface tension of any liquid besides mercury. Now that we know how strong the water's surface really is, let's break that tension. First, you're gonna get your pepper. Mini hypothesis time. If you crack a few shakes of pepper on the surface of your water, will the pepper flakes float or will they sink? Once you have your mini hypothesis ready, go ahead and add the pepper to the water. You'll notice the pepper is floating. That's because pepper is hydrophobic. Hydrophobic means that it really does not like water and does not want to mix with it. In fact, the pepper is actually pushing the water away. Next, we're going to add something to the water that completely changes the way the pepper interacts with it. Time to get your dish soap. Before you add your soap, let's think for a minute about what we already know about soap. Thinking about how you've used soap in the past, how will the soap change the water? Once you have your hypothesis ready, let's move on to the next step. Go ahead and grab your toothpick. I don't have a toothpick, so I'm using this metal chopstick. You can use anything pokey for this next part. You can use a bobby pin, you could use the paper clip from the previous experiment, um, toothpick, fork time, really anything pokey will work. Take your pokey item and load it up with some dish soap. There we go. Now tap your soapy end of your pokey item to the surface of your water. You move this out of the way. Okay. What happened? You probably saw the pepper fleeing away from the spot where you tapped the soap. What happened? Well, to understand why the pepper ran away from the soap, we'll have to know a little bit more about how soap works. So what is soap? What does it do? If you said that it cleans things, you're only partially correct. While some soaps do have disinfecting properties or they're antibacterial, the way most soaps work is they disrupt the water's surface tension. See, water and oil do not like to mix. They really hate each other. So if you have grease, grime, dirt trapped in oil, the water will not interact with it and it won't clean it by itself. However, soap has a part of it that does like oil and the part of the soap that's attracted to the oil will stick to it and sort of scoop it up. And at the same time, the other part of the soap is attracted to the water and it breaks through the water's surface tension, allowing the water to scoop up the soap with the grease and the grime and wash it all down the drain. See, soap doesn't actually clean things by itself. It's more that it makes it possible for the water to wash the grease and the grime away. And what does that have to do with the pepper exactly? Well, the pepper is sitting on top of the water because of surface tension. When the soap breaks up that surface tension, it destroys that cohesion between the water molecules. If you remember, cohesion is when the water molecules are sticking together. So once they're broken up, once they're no longer sticking together, the molecules of water race away from the soap, running to the edge, taking the pepper with them. And in the meantime, new water molecules from underneath are rising to replace the old ones at the surface. Would it surprise you to learn that water can travel uphill against the force of gravity? This happens because of capillary action, which is when water flows through a narrow space, such as a solid material, lots of holes, or a hollow tube. This is because of cohesion. The water molecules are sticking together, and when they interact with another object or surface, they stick to that object too. The force of cohesion allows the water to move up or through an object. An example of this is when you leave a straw in a glass of water, like this. What you might notice is the water traveling up the straw, and this is capillary action. Capillary action is important in everyday life. It helps move fluids throughout the body, helps water travel through plants, and it even affects weathering in rocks. In fact, capillary action is why New York City tap water tastes so good. The water comes to us through the Catskill Mountains, which are really low in limestone. So as the water travels through the rocks, 
it's not picking up a lot of calcium, which is bitter tasting. Some people say that's why New York has the best bagels and pizza. And it's all thanks to capillary action. In this next activity, we're gonna use some markers and a coffee filter and our friend capillary action to make some awesome art. To do this activity along with me, you will need to gather the following supplies. Coffee filters, markers, a container or a cup of water, a straw. Pause here if you need time to gather these materials. Hypothesis time. What colors do you think you'll see in your ink? And how will the water travel to the coffee filter to make your beautiful art? Draw a line on the coffee filter with a marker, then fold into a triangle. Set the tip into a cup of water, making sure the ink stays above the water line. Let the filter sit for a few minutes. When you return, you can open the filter up to see your amazing watercolor. What we just did is called chromatography. Chromatography comes from the Greek words chroma, meaning color, and graph, meaning writing. So together, it means color writing. In science, chromatography is the separation of a chemical mixture into different parts using a liquid or a gas. In this case, the water is traveling through the coffee filter, separating the inks into different parts and carrying the dye. Chromatography is used in biochemistry. It can be used to find out the ingredients that make up the ink in a marker, a specific flavor or scent in foods, or to trace pollutants in water. Thank you for joining us to learn all about water. You got to learn how the water cycle creates different kinds of weather. And how surface tension and capillary action make water the unique liquid that we all love. So the next time you're sipping on a cold glass of water through a straw or enjoying a warm summer rain, you'll know how wonderful water really is. See you next time.